the muscles from my right leg. So um, that in itself was a huge discipline to try and get back to where you are um, and start to win competitions again. I like the competitive aspect of it as well. So as you were starting your ballet and you're learning about ballet itself, I mean, was the ballet you, you liked? What, what aspects of the ballet did you like? Was it, what, was it the discipline of it? Was it the sheer, in a weird way, the freedom of the dancing? Or the culture of it as well? And, and specific ballets that you really liked and the ideas and what it was trying to like, present? I think it, it starts with a lot of things. We've all got this in common. We've probably all got heroes of some sort. And my, one of my greatest heroes was Margot Fontaine. Um, so I wanted to emulate her in, as best I could. And um, it was the fantasy. You know, she was an amazing dancer, not just for her technique, but the fact that she had this wonderful uh, charisma, which is the difference between being just a ballerina and being a prima ballerina. And she was the absolute top of her, her game and went on for years and years. Um, too long really because um, her husband um, had got shot and he was a cripple and uh, and she had to take care of him so she was the only breadwinner he was a uh, paraplegic um, for, for years um, he obviously was quite a vibrant man when they married and then they ended up she ended up having to look after him for the rest of her life yeah. so she carried on and uh, what it just shows you what amazing uh, uh, strength she had, mind, of mind and of body. But also, to answer your question, it's the fantasy aspect of ballet. You can transport yourself into another world. Um, and most of the ballets that you see, you, Swan Lake is my favorite probably, um, you can see the fantasy, the stories, and you, and you actually have to learn how to, um, to act stories in ballet. So that there are lessons. What kind of way? You know, physically? Or physically, or yeah. Facial yeah, expressions yeah. And like. facial expressions, yeah. yeah. Another yeah. thing is I used to like love improvisation. I think that's a punk aspect of it all as well. Um, I would practice lots of ballets and it, you would have every step down. And then at the very last minute, I remember once at a very big competition, I decided at the very last minute just to make it all up. Yeah. Can you do that? I thought ballet was all very, very words out. It was. Yeah. My dancing teacher was going absolutely punk. Okay, she this is your version. Yeah. 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 She just like looked at me and went, you know, for three, what was going through her head was three months we've been rehearsing this, and there's not one step that is in every sentence. And I won. Well, it because of the improvisation. Yeah, I, I'm sure it was. Um, it was the freedom of mind that, that made me able to dance with a really something very, very special that night. I beat somebody who'd actually got into the World Ballet School to do that. Mm. Uh, Jarman's film, and that, that sort of came after, and I, I managed to do something that really a lot of ballerinas couldn't do. I, I was in a film, and it was, um, again, all improvised, and, mm. and, and it's a, a lasting piece of work, which, you know, mm. my little dream came true with that. Yeah. Without having to go through years of um, hell. hell. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have to soak. You have to soak your tights off normally because you get blood coming from your from your toes. I mean, I used to have to put my feet in cold water after every performance just to soak the tights off. There's something very punk about that. The extremity of it. The, the yeah. sheer beauty of a ballet dancer dancing. Yeah. And the idea that the feet get ripped to pieces. Mm -hmm. So for, for me, that makes me think of early punk, you know, yeah, know. a very extreme culture. But yeah. in a way, ballet and punk, you would think, were opposite ends of the spectrum. There's a lot yeah. of weird discipline and crossovers here, isn't there? There is. Um, um, for me, I saw it as that improvisation side of it uh, was, was the punk aspect for me, if you want to call it punk. Um, I. It's the, it's the idea of freedom, and it doesn't matter. You, you don't, I don't, didn't ever worry about offending anyone on stage. Yeah. Um, actually, I did offend somebody once because uh, my, my strap at my tutu broke, <laughs> revealing. Uh, I thought that's what you did, you did it every day for about three years. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I, um, 
I made a lot of great friends as well. You, you know, it's wonderful. I used to do these um, duets as well. And I used to do character dancing too. And that's quite fascinating, you know, so you have to learn that? the cultural yeah. uh, aspects of, say, a Russian dance. So you have to learn about the culture and the movements of the dance. Um, and I really, really did quite well at that as well. So I mentioned an interesting insight to you as a person is like what you talked about before, the car accident, and the way you kind of came back from that. I mean, was there a point in time, were you in hospital, was it about nine months? Uh, no, I was only in the hospital for three months. Yeah. But I had to learn to walk again, so. All the time you were determined to go back oh, yeah. to the ballet. Well, yeah. I was very, very disappointed because my um, my dancing teacher was crestfallen and she was inconsolable. You know, she brought me, I remember she brought me this little potted plant um, to the hospital and I could just, she, just see her crying and she went, we're never going to dance again. Yeah. And um, what you did? You? I did, I did, yeah. yeah. I mean, what level did you get to? Did you get to a level? Right back where I was. Oh, really? Wow. A year after I got dancing again um, and got the muscles back on this leg, I got 98 points out of 100 for a classical ballet at the, fe at the festival, Eastbourne Festival. It's a really big one. And that's just, I don't know, I think it gave me more determination to do even better. And you were dancing, you did the ballet to about 18, were you? Yeah, then so I came up to London. It was crossing over the pump here as well, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, I had a little, I had my tutu, and I used to take that with me wherever I went. So if there was a, it was in a little box, and um, I used to, whenever I moved flat in London, it was there, you know, it was it there when Johnny Thunder stayed. You know? <laughs> it was forever a bit of my, uh, my life, I guess, yeah. Because I uh, famously the first time you went to the shop, Mark and Vivian shop, you danced down the King's Rose in your ballet. Yeah. Or your appropriation of your ballet yeah. outfit. Yeah. Well, Vivian remembers what I was wearing the first time she met me, which is quite astounding because I didn't. So she, she's obviously got a really good memory of it. But it was my ballet gear. I used to just wear tights and my leotard and a lovely pair of really high stilettos. Uh, my pair right arm. Um, uh, and I used to, you can see from those early photos that Sheila Rock took actually, you can see it's almost a poetic pose outside the shop. And um, Vivian said, oh, you know, um, she never used to dance in the shop. <laughs> and I obviously did, but never when she was there. <laughs> we used to dance around all over the place in there. Yeah, and that, that was till you were 18? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean 18, 19 danced all the time. I did a, also, I did a dance at um, Andrew Logan's oh, the, party. The was good, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, was that just a spontaneous thing, or was that what you asked to do? That? I was asked to do it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So everyone went in a big circle around, and I had a sort of ready-made stage for me on the floor. It's really good. <laughs> so look at that, it's an odd crossover. Otto Preminger was there. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But Vivian knew, didn't she? She did. She, she, she actually taught you to about it, didn't she? She did. Um, don't know if anyone remembers, you can see some old shots of this, um, shots of the shop where there's a, a, chi a woman from the Chinese ballet, she's all in red and she's doing a great big leap with this um, wonderful costume on. And she obviously had this in her mind as a beautiful image. She didn't know anything about ballet as such, but she had this in her mind as a beautiful image. And um, one day out of the blue, she just said, well, let, um, would you like to come out with me? I've got us two tickets. And she took me to the Cuban ballet. Um, and when you think how many years ago, I, I can remember so much about that. Mm. It was just, took your breath away. Mm. I mean, these male dancers were just stupid. Well, you were saying, weren't you, about the, the Cuban... They, even when they men, walk, yeah. they look like they're dancing. Yeah. You know, it's like they were flying, literally flying yeah. through the air. Uh, and with such power and also, you know, bravado, it's, it's a wonderful... I, I, mean, I, was, I was saying earlier, wasn't I, that, you know, you cannot have false modesty if you're going to be somebody that's that famous and beautiful. Mm. You have to really, really um, tell everybody that you're the best. I mean, that's interesting you are saying that, this, this idea that to be the main ballerina, you have to tell everyone you are the main ballerina. So yeah. Yeah. It seems like an incredibly egotistical backstage, but is it, that's just the way it is, that's just what people expect. 
most of the people, the women in a corps de ballet, which is the, you know, the ballerinas that, that um, make up the chorus, so to speak, and the backdrop of the prima ballerina, they, you, you can see it when you go to the ballet, um, they all look on in amazement, you know, and they're actually looking... Well, that's fun. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, you know, happy. And one day, you know, they might be that person. Yeah. That's what they're aspiring to. So they're looking at every movement that that dancer does. Um, and, you know, one day might emulate it. But it's, it's more than just learning the moves, isn't it? They've got to have that little extra thing, like Nureyev. Yes. He had. He ticked every box. He, he did. He did. Yeah. So what, what would he have that would make him extra to... Well, Rudolf Nureyev came into, into 430 Kings Road and even, oh, he dressed so awfully as well. <laughs> I couldn't believe what he was dressed like. <laughs> what was he wearing? He had a that? safari suit on. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Only Brian Ferry really, could get away with really, that. Really, really yeah. bad. Yeah. He had this dreadful cap on as well. It was really awful. Did you uh, have a word? <laughs> no. That, well, that's not like you. I thought, I thought you were quite stern. I just, there. you know, I just looked at him and thought, what can you say? There's nothing right about this. <laughs> You look like Tony Curtis out of Persuaders. <laughs> and had he come in to buy anything at all? Yeah, he'd come in uh, with his boyfriend to, to look at the leather gear, I think. From yeah. The gear. But, you know, even as he walked into the shop, I, you could see the way he held himself. So despite everything, yeah. he still looked like yeah. the number one. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's... it's um. It's a sort of 24 hours a day charisma, I would say. You know, it, it's, it's not put on, it's, it's how he was. And most dancers are like that, they have that. So in, in a way he, he knew he was so good, he could wear the worst clothes possible. I'm hoping that, I'd be clinging on to him. get out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not tempted to tell him that you might do a little bit of ballet, you know? Oh no, no, it would be even worse than saying to Frederick Ashton. <laughs> you know, keep keep shtum about that. No way I would have said that. Yeah. But he probably would have recognised that you do see. I can tell people who've done ballet in Oh, is it? so it really is like a bit like the fight club, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you can, you like can see it. Like a nod in a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah. You see it in hand movements. and uh, uh, The most amazing thing about ballet is that I know that whenever you see a, a female dancer in particular who has to go on point, they are going through absolute agony at every minute. Um, and yet the, the, the trick is to have your uh, face in a relaxed, uh, uh, powerful stance. Mm. Do, you, do you have to learn that? To yes. To teach yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. So what, what's that face? Just do the face. Well, you, have, you have to always elongate your, your neck mm -hmm. and keep your shoulders down, which is so hard when you're in pain. Because you people always tend to want to do that. So which bit's harder? The, the feet hurting or having to like, look well, like they're not hurting? Yeah, you've got to sort of separate the top of your body from the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to imagine that you've got a, a steel rod, a core that's going right from the top of your head. My dancing teacher used to say, tap me on the head like this. Mm. And that you, then your, your brain sort of says, okay, it's going all the way down my spine. Mm -hmm. Wow, so it's, it's tough, it's super tough. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, bang your legs apart and... Oh, they actually yeah. hit you in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, not, not bad, but... No, know, but just remind you of a lot. Push it out, yeah. yeah. I mean, why, why did it end up like that? Why did it end up being such an extreme sort of discipline in this way of moving, you know, for the original history of ballet? Well, obviously, when it started, it would be one thing, it's got more difficult as it's gone along. Yes, yeah, it, it has. I mean, now, nowadays, it's even, you, you see male dancers on point. Mm. Which again is very very difficult because they they're heavier um, and they've obviously got longer feet as well, which is very difficult. I, I tell you just quickly, I saw a really great program um, the other day. It was just about shoes actually, but um, when you get a pair of point shoes, I actually went to Frederick Fried's, who still makes the, these ballet shoes now. They've been going for 90 years, I believe, um, and they're in the West End in, in London. Um, you have to smash the shoes to pieces before you can wear them. Really? Because they, they rub and tear your feet up? Yeah, they're really, really brittle. So what are they made out of? Um, they're made out of uh, leather, satin, but also this sort of hessian, which is wrapped round and round and round, glued, and then another bit glued, another bit glued, and then you have the satin over the top of it. Um, and they have to bash it to make it um, the actual point flat. And, and the way that a ballet shoe is balanced is that they can stand it up and it stays there. Yeah. 
um, but you can't dance on, with them unless you've actually personalised them. So I used to just rock them back and forward and break the back off them so that your arch would fit into it. And how long do they last for? I mean, if you break them, you can't last them. Uh, well, some ballerinas, uh, a pair of shoes will last for one performance. Wow. Um, and I think the Royal Ballet School last year, sorry, the Royal Ballet um, had 13,000 pairs of shoes made for their dancers. That's point shoes. And it was half a million pounds wow. it cost. How long does it take to learn to get on point? Is it, does it take, I mean, do you have to like stand there on point for quite a long time to get your balance? This is the point where a lot of dancers give up. Mm. You know, they, they don't want to do it anymore. That's, uh, so it's gone from these nice little soft kid leather flat shoes to sheer agony and it takes um and you're not allowed to do it when you're too young either probably because your feet will get formed into yeah. that position yeah. yeah 13 years i think is the mm. the only time that you can start you must do it before that i mean now do you do you miss doing ballet i do actually mm. i do um i still occasionally do some limbering moves but um you've got to be very careful because you, you know i'm not a young person anymore I'm, you can do some serious damage to yourself if you're not mm. warmed up first properly. Is it, is it not like a simplified version? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what I like to do is to do sort of hand movements. Mm. Um, and I do a port de bras, which is when you do all the movements. Like one, two, three. Mm. And it's, it's all numbered. All of the moves in, in, in ballet are numbered. So the basic foot of position one, two, three, four, and five. That's what it's all built around, mm. and it's the same with the arms. So that just keeps your back nice and still strong. Mm. I mean, it's, it's obviously still a very important part of your life, because mm. your book, the wonderful book you've just written, yeah. Defining Graffiti, yeah. is, is a term you took from ballet? It is, yeah. De 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 Defying Gravity really went from from my head to my feet, and that's why I, that's why the book is called Defying Gravity. It was partly to do. It starts at my head, with my hair, because mm. I, you know, thank God for Elnet hairspray. So that was <laughs> Defying Gravity, um, and it goes all the way through to my my ballet um, mm. and uh, and dancing in general. I mean, it used to love dancing and jumping about. And but it, it, also, it also affected your attitude to life and everything. Yeah. It's always been the bump period, in mm -hmm. a sense. Mm -hmm. Even though you weren't doing the ballet anymore, the way you stand, the way you're dressing, yeah. everything's a stage, isn't it? You're kind of dancing through the bump scene in a way, aren't you? I do. It was one big dance, the whole thing. <laughs> it yeah. was. Um, and it puts you in good stead, like when I sang with Adam and the Ants. You know, you can see that, you know, you, you can hold yourself at the microphone well mm. and um, and also you're used to, to working an audience in, a, in the right way. Um, was, was Adam fascinated with your ballet? Yes, yeah. So yeah, what, what very was, much. What, was, yeah. what aspects did it fascinate him? Well, he, the power of it. Mm. Um, I used to use his, um, when he lived in St Mark's Crescent, he had this really great fireplace which was made for him, a wooden fireplace. And I used to use that as a bar. Mm. So I would hold on to it and I'd get him to push my leg up as far as it would go. But you have to do it gently, otherwise you can... Yeah, rip it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, that's pushing it right up high. Mm. Mm. And he loved it because, again, he's a very disciplined man. Um, and uh, he understands going through pain. Mm. Um, and it, it re resonates with him. So the intensity of ballet was something that was... Because we talked about before the idea when people did a ballet performance, it had, it's utter, about utter perfection, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the same as a performer like Adam, but yeah. he would be cursing himself by a mistake he made 20 years ago or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember once he, Adam did um, this great, great gig in, at uh, Radio City in, uh, in New York. It's a famous stage because it's, it's it had the rockets on it, all those dancers. It's a massive, massive stage. And that man danced and sung all the way through it without getting puffed out or mm. leaping in the air. Mm. He was amazing. And afterwards I said to him, that was just astounding, really great. And, he, and all he could do is pick, pick at it, and mm. pick fault with it. And that very similar? That's exactly the same as most dancers. They will yeah. always, always look. I doubt if anyone's ever, Margot Fontaine probably never came off the stage ever saying that she'd done a perfect performance. Yeah. 
<laughs> probably the closer people get, the further they feel they are. As yeah, well. yeah, that's yeah. a good point, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they, we only got half an hour, which is short than know. most ballet performances. <laughs> so I'm not going to ask you to do any ballet, but yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thanks to Jordan. <laughs> You've all heard something quite unique, actually. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.